Hi, and welcome to Film Forums. I'm Richard Williams, creator of this platform, a place dedicated to the filmmaking community. We interview members of the film industry to find out what it really takes to make a movie, bring a script to screen, or secure their acting role. If that sounds good to you, please subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on your favourite podcasting platform so you can be the first to know when an episode drops. Thank you. This is my boyfriend, John. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. I hope you don't mind that I'm here. It's important to me that you're okay with this. I'm happy for you guys. You're kind of a, a weird dude. I guess I am. But I mean, weird is cool, right? I saw you walk into the lake towards his light. I'm pretty dry. I love him so, so much. So Welcome to Film Forums. Thank you so, so much for uh, taking the time to speak to me today about uh, yourself uh, and about your film. Could you introduce yourself, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Braden. I am a filmmaker, a writer, director from uh, the US. I started out growing up kind of as a, a hockey player and being really into sports. Uh, I finally found film in college through a film theory class and eventually ended up at USC Film School uh, where I ultimately got into production. You've had the benefit of a comprehensive film education. Um, you became the first film major at the University of Vermont to win the coveted uh, Duggan Folly Award and you also earned the Thomas B. Uh, Bush Cinematography Scholarship at USC. So can you explain to us the value of going to film school if you want to call it film school as a general? term and some of the biggest takeaways from that academic experience and do you think that you would have got to where you are now regardless of that so if you hadn't gone through an academic route and done so well there yeah would you still have got to where you are now do you think that's a great question um i'd like to think that it will it, it was necessary i did need to do all of this i think i value some things more than others like i said before i grew up playing hockey really only caring about sports uh, you know, I was, I did academics, but it wasn't something I, I really uh, committed to throughout high school. Um, but then when I went to college, I took a film theory class just because I thought it'd be fun, you know, history of film. Okay, cool. I get to watch movies and talk about them. And my professor, Todd McGowan, who I'm still in touch with this day, just made me fall in love with the material. He was just so charismatic, so interesting, so, so fantastic. And from that point on, for the next four years, I learned so many things. I, I watched so many movies from like French New Wave, Italian Reconstructionism, like all these different styles of filmmaking, you know, watched some really incredible experimental films that were done by uh, filmmakers who would literally scratch the film uh, and, and paste things onto it to create an image. It was so much stuff that I got introduced to through film theory that I think what it did is it taught me the language of film. It taught me how to speak in film. And as a result, I had the foundation to be a good filmmaker. And then when I went to USC, which is more for production, I had that language in my head, but I didn't know the practical way of creating it. You know, I didn't know the X's and O's to it. And so USC really brought that together in the sense where I learned you know, I, I picked up a camera for the first time and I shot it, you know, I knew what I wanted to capture in my head, but I didn't necessarily know how to physically capture it with the camera. So you hadn't picked up a camera kind of before that then not, at all? Not, not really, uh, right, except okay. for the little like, uh, remember the little tape of video uh, things that people were Handicam doing? sort of thing, before yeah. Before HD, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was kind of my own really experience with the camera. Okay. And I got to USC and, and I just completely dived in from, dove in from day one. They were just, you know, automatically you were shooting stuff. And it was funny because I was picked out as kind of a cinematographer in the school. And I think part of that was because of my film theory background. So, you know, USC taught the production, film theory, uh, U University of Vermont taught me the, the foundation, the language. 
Another thing that USC taught me well is how to deal with and work with and motivate and inspire and redirect actors. You know, I think that's such an underrated quality of a director's job is to maintain the performance of a film. I didn't even know that that was a job for directors until I went to USC <laughs> because it, because at, at, in film theory, we talk about the image so much that we spend a little less time on performance. The biggest value I have, so from UVM, I think the biggest value I had was 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 the language but from usc was the physical production of things which you could have learned just from doing it you know you could have just kind of taught yourself but also the people that i surrounded myself with one of the reasons that what lies below came about was because one of my best friends from usc i met up with him i shared the script and he sent it to a producer from usc who loved it who sent it to one of his producers who loved it and then you know the ball gets rolling so when you go to a very top tier film school, a really good film school, you get you end up working with really talented people that are very passionate about the craft. And as a result, that's in itself a commodity that I think is underrated, you know, and probably one of the best. It's not necessarily the people that have already graduated. Like I'm not gonna reach out to Steven Spielberg anytime soon just because he is involved with USC, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the people I came up with, the people that I worked with and I and I worked on their film set and they worked on my film set back at USC, I'm still in touch with them. And that, and that in itself is, is, is an incredible wealth to have at your disposal uh, when trying to make movies. Sounds a little bit like what we're trying to achieve here at film, film forums without sounding at all pretentious and, and clearly no, we're not at your level, but most of us on the film forums team now um, are indeed aspiring filmmakers and we're interviewing more and more people, making connections and, and who knows where that will lead. It may not lead to anywhere, but I, I suspect it will. So similar um, kind of networking experience for us as well. That's really good to hear. Networking full stop is obviously a, a great thing. I almost like hate the, the term networking because it, it makes it feel shallow. Like you just need to develop really good friendships. You know, 100%. you have to have... You know, you have to have people that you really trust. I mean, I know a ton of people that are in film, but there's five or six people that I will go to battle with on a film set any day of the week, you know? And those are the ones that you really have to hold on to, you know, because they're really special and they're always gonna, they're gonna genuinely support you, you know? So yeah, network, absolutely. But find your core group, I think, uh, you know, for people that are listening, find those, those four or five people that they get you, you get them, you work well together. Even if you argue, that's great. Like argue is good. You know, different opinions are good, but you know, yeah. just make sure you trust people and they work hard and you work hard for them kind of thing. Yeah. Can you tell us what your latest movie, What Lies Below is about? And have you always been into the horror genre? Uh, what Lies Below is a film about a 16 uh, year old girl who comes home from her typical summer vacation at camp uh, to realize that her mom has met a guy. And the guy is kind of an Adonis. He's just this incredibly good looking, handsome, charming man. And for the first time in, in um, her life, there's a little bit of a sexual awakening in her um, and things start to get awkward. And then one night in the middle of the night, she wakes up to this bright light in the backyard and she looks out the back window and she sees the man basking in the light. And then all of a sudden he just starts walking towards the light into the lake. Uh, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, so the film is, is really a mystery. Who is this man? What's the light? What's going on? All these things. It is a very much a horror film. It is very much a thriller. Uh, but at its core, I, th I think it's a mystery. And that's what I love about it. I, I've always been into horror. I think it was James Wan who said, it's very difficult to make because if the audience sees the seams, they're not scared. If they see the mechanism of the, the camera. And I also have always had this kind of morbid fascination with death. Like even when I was five years old, uh, I still remember I was so scared of death at some point, at like a, as five or six years old, that my parents had to buy me a book that explained death to me, like in little like pictures, you know, just to kind of understand that it was just process of life and that it happens very late in life. It's not a big deal. The book really didn't help, but I, I eventually got over the fear uh, as a kid, but it kind of manifests itself in different ways now as an adult. And so I'm always fascinated by stories that tell life or death struggle you know things that you don't know if the characters are going to survive this life and death is the ultimate challenge we're slowly dying throughout our life 
and we're trying to avoid it and prolong it as much as possible. And so it kind of brings that to the forefront. And, and I love stories that have that drive. So that, that's why horror is just such a great ballpark. You know, it's just the perfect uh, medium for that, the big perfect story genre for that. I would say with yours I, I watched today, it, it, it certainly seems a, a more of a unique take on a horror that I've seen for, for quite a while without putting any spoilers in there's some of the things, some of the devices you put in there. Um, yeah, really impressive. And I hadn't seen anything quite like it um, before, especially towards the end. And again, I will not spoil it. Um, so yeah, I definitely uh, implore people to watch it. Um, it, it builds awesome. uh, very, very nicely towards uh, the ending. And um, yeah, it isn't, um, you know, your typical ending, I would say. Um, so that's really, really cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's no, you're welcome. Um, what challenges did you face during filming, especially with the scenes on the water, if we're allowed to mention that? Uh, oh, man, there, there's so many. It's an indie film, you know, so we, we had a tight schedule. It was it was originally scheduled for 20 days because of some of those issues, it ended up being 19 days. One thing that's most important to realize is, is what's the most expensive thing on the film set? A lot of people don't realize what it is. It, it, it's labor, it's people, right? To get those people, to get talented people on set working on your film, that costs the most amount of money. So anytime you lose time on a film set, you are costing yourself money. Um, and that's such, such an important thing to realize when young filmmakers are writing something, they need to do stuff that can be happening in the shortest amount of time, that they, they can shoot in the shortest amount of time. So minimal locations, minimal actors, et cetera, right? But as an example of, of how badly this can go wrong, the light in the lake scene, we had to purchase, or excuse me, rent a, a, a 4,000 watt light. Uh, we, there was some debate about whether 2,000 was enough or 4,000 was enough, and 4,000 still didn't end up being enough. So we were actually wrong. We still needed even more than 4,000, but um, and we, we couldn't get it. So it was never as bright as I had in my head. When we put the light in, a screw on the casing broke, okay? And so the light kept falling apart as, and, and as a result, falling over in the water. Our gaffer and our grip took three hours to try to figure out a solution to fix this screw. So the entire set, is waiting for a, a small group of people to try to figure out this one screw. This is the problem. And so we're talking about, you know, you don't know how many man hours and woman hours and, and, and people hours and, and all over a single screw. So it just shows you how fundamental things like that are, like how important it is to not lose time, to never, ever lose time. Yeah. And that's why they always say on film sets, if you're, if you're on time, you're 15 minutes late, you know? because you just have to be on it. When is um, the movie released and where will it be available? I'm not 100% sure about the UK, unfortunately. I know in Germany, it's December 17th, because um, I'm, I'm, my family's originally from Germany. So I have a lot of family members over there. And I also have part of my family from the UK originally. In the US, it's released on December 4th and it'll be on video on demand. It'll be on the section um, in theaters now because there might be a small theatrical release to go with it, depending on COVID, of course. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to budding filmmakers? And what do you wish you'd been told before you embarked on a filmmaking journey? So two things. Uh, one is, if you can, write. Because that's the only thing that doesn't cost any money, that nobody can take away from you, that you can always do. And there's value in a script. A script has value. A feature script has value. So you're always committing to something that actually has value. And, and don't ever get hung up on one script either. Once you finish one and you're pretty happy with it, move on, write another one, write another one, write another one. While you're trying to get one made, write another. While you're trying to get the other one made, write another. Um, because you never know what, which one is gonna click. I was actually really far down the road with another script when I was writing Viscous, which became What Lies Below. And when somebody read What Lies Below, it just, all of a sudden, everything shifted, right? And that's the way it is. You just never know what's going to click with people, you know? The, the other piece of advice is write cheap. Nobody is ever going to give you, you know, $4 million, $2 million, $5 million to do your first feature, okay? You need to write something so cheap that you could do it yourself, but you would like to have the money. You could literally do it on the weekends with a credit card and your friends, you know, if you had to. Yeah. And just... And just go out and do it um, because then you don't have to wait for anybody to say, yes, you're good. You can do this, right? You can do it yourself. 
Um, and then if you're fortunate enough to actually make a connection where somebody finances it, great. And if not, you can still make the movie because it's cheap to make, right? It's a really good bit of advice. So thank you I for mean, that. Yeah. If you look at a lot of, of recent filmmakers that have gone in, got, have come up, um, a lot of them started out making like 40,000, 20,000, uh, this is USD now, $50,000 first features. Uh, one of my buddies who's now making this major $20 million studio film started out with a $40,000 horror film in a motel. He just shot it with like friends, you know, in a, in a little uh, Canon 7D, right? And then he made some money off of that and he made another one for 50,000. He made some money off that and he made one for $100,000 and he made some money off that. And he just kept building it until he kind of had a name and he got noticed. The, the low budget feature is the new short film, in my opinion. And mm -hmm. so if you can go make a, sh a low budget feature, go do it what's next for you obviously uh, you'll be pushing your, your current movie and rightly so um but up beyond that um, and maybe beyond coronavirus who knows um what's what's next for you what, what's in your future as i said uh just two seconds ago I, i'm always writing you know i mean you can see in the back I'm, I'm outlining a script right now um i have a lot of other scripts that i have i have a uh a russian mafia uh thriller called uh the the close and holy darkness I have a um, sci-fi horror psychological thriller called Mold. Um, I have a historical uh, horror film called Nostrone set in the Viking age. Um, so, you know, I, I, have, I have a ton of scripts and my hope is that when the movie comes out, um, I, you know, you get some traction, you get people excited about you and your work, and then you can send those scripts out and try to get some interest and try to get something going a lot of this industry is just momentum you know it's it's who's hot you know <laughs> so yeah. to speak and so i'm just hoping to have some momentum out of this and then uh, hopefully go right into another feature i noticed the post-it notes behind you straight away is just out of interest is that one story or is that a multiple um, narratives you've got going on there that's one script um so it's one script and and what i do when i'm part of my process is i do a lot of research on the topic i, I watch a lot of reference films i read a lot of books um, and then while I'm doing that, I take notes, anything that makes me interested, any quote I think of, any character I think of, any scene that I think of, I just write it down. Mm -hmm. And then I figure out what a, I, I write up what a basic outline would be. And I try to put those notes into the spots. And I feel when you do it that way, it's a little bit more organic than when you try to figure out the scenes based on what the narrative should be. Um, so I'm kind of, you know, deconstructing it a little bit. And and it, it works for me. And, and every color has a different meaning um, for me uh, and helps me organize my thoughts. It's kind of old school because like everyone's on iPads and computers and, and that's great. And it's definitely got its, it serves its purpose. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you've got it old school on post-it notes, which I love. That's great. So that's really cool yeah. to see. And okay. it's good because you can shift things around and, and try things very easily. And thank you so much for joining us today. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you. No, no problem. Thank you so much, man.